Acer Aspire Predator G7750. If visions of Paisley printed portables dance in your head when you hear the words Acer Aspire, then the Aspire Predator is here to shake up your preconceived notions about the brand. Sure, Acer is well known for its notebooks and netbooks, but the company sells plenty of desktop towers and all-in-ones as well. The $1,999 gaming-centric Acer Aspire Predator G7750, with its intimidating orange on black exterior, is certainly one of the most striking systems in Acer's lineup. But despite its impressive internals and strong productivity performance, this machine doesn't deliver gaming results as stellar as other systems in this price range. It's still a very capable gaming rig, but if you're after maximum frame rates and features for the price, there are better options available. For instance, I bought iPower's LAN Warrior 2, also $2,000 in our test configuration, ships with the same Intel Core i7-930 processor as the Predator, but only half the memory, 6GB, of the Predator's slightly insane 12GB. We can see where iBuyPower hit the $2,000 mark with its speedy 64GB SSD, 1TB hard drive, and Blu-ray drive. The Predator's primary differentiators are a spacious 1.5TB hard drive, the aforementioned 12GB of memory, and, of course, the Predator case itself. You won't find a Blu-ray drive or SSD here. The LAM Warrior, on the other hand, is clad in a comparatively mundane NZXT Vulcan case. In the graphics arena, Acer opts for a roughly $300 NVIDIA GeForce GTX 470 card with 1.2GB of memory, rather than NVIDIA's pricier flagship GeForce GTX 480. IB Power instead opted for ATI's ultra-high-end, dual-graphics chip-packing Radeon HD 5970, a card that sold for upwards of $600 at the time of this review. Looking at the disparity between the components in these two systems, it quickly becomes obvious that you're paying quite the premium for the Predator's audacious aesthetics. Of course, that's nothing new. Dell's Alienware gaming rigs, like the Aurora ALX, with its motorized fan gills and battery-powered interior LED lighting, over $4,000 in our test configuration, certainly carry their own price premium over what companies like iBuyPower can put together with off-the-shelf parts. But what really matters here is how well the Predator can handle demanding games. And in testing, the Predator was impressive, but far from dominant compared to the LAN Warrior 2. First off, to test the system's ability to handle cutting-edge games, we ran the Heaven Direct X11, the X11, benchmark. The bulk of the X11 games have yet to hit the market, but the Heaven benchmark runs on a DX11 gaming engine that will be used on future games. It's also the most demanding test we run, often pushing the limits of even the beefiest graphics cards at high resolutions. Of course, that's nothing new. Dell's Alienware gaming rigs, like the Aurora ALX, with its motorized fan gills and battery-powered interior LED lighting, over $4,000 in our test configuration, certainly carry their own price premium over what companies like iBuyPower can put together with off-the-shelf parts. But what really matters here is how well the Predator can handle demanding games. And in testing, the Predator was impressive, but far from dominant compared to the LAN Warrior 2. First off, to test the system's ability to handle cutting-edge games, we ran the Heaven Direct X11, the X11, benchmark. The bulk of the X11 games have yet to hit the market, but the Heaven benchmark runs on a DX11 gaming engine that will be used on future games. It's also the most demanding test we run, often pushing the limits of even the beefiest graphics cards at high resolutions. 151.2 FPS, it's clear that, while the Predator is a capable gaming rig, if it's raw performance you're after, which will matter much more down the line when games become more demanding, the LAN Warrior 2 is a smarter investment. Stepping up to the 30-inch screen resolution of 2560 by 1600, the Predator's store of 59.9 FPS was significantly outpaced by the LAN Warriors showing of 93.1 FPS on the same test. In our CPU-centric productivity suite, consisting of Windows Media Encoder, Synfench 10, and an iTunes MP3 to AAC conversion routine, the two machines performed nearly identically, which is to be expected, given that they're running the same processor. Both machines are stellar at productivity systems, but the extra 6GB of RAM in the Predator doesn't seem to do it many, or any, favors here. 
in future Mark's PC Mark Vantage, a holistic test that measures overall system performance, the Predator flat-out faltered with a score of 8,228 to the Land Warrior 2's somewhat more heroic 13,124. Getting at the Predator's internals doesn't require Schwarzenegger-like skills, but it isn't as easy as you might expect. Because the case's face shield is hinged to the side panels, you'll need to remove the two big thumb screws on the left side to first release the hinge points. Then it's a short jaw to the rear of the case, where you'll find two tabs on the back of the panel. Press them up, then slowly pry away the side panel with one hand while you use the other to hold the now loose hinges up and away from the side panel. If you happen to have a third hand, you might want to use it to brace the panel should it slip off before you expect it to and attempt to escape to the floor. Once you've managed all of that, you'll finally be able to access the internal components. What you'll see inside is a lot of orange. Acer uses covered plastic partitions in the case to wall off some areas from others. They're easily removable but seem rather pointless. All RAM slots are occupied, but the 12 GB should be more than enough for almost everyone. An available 5.25-inch bay is ready for a second optical drive and there's space for three additional 3.25-inch internal drives. This last arrangement deserves some note, the bays are lined up vertically and are accessible through the front of the case. One of the four total bays already holds the system's current 1.5TB hard drive. Pushing on a front tab and then extracting the hard drive's carrier can open the bay and its three companions. There are no cables to mess with here, as the connectors are attached around the back, allowing drives to be slotted right in with ease. You'll find three key slots on the motherboard but, with the GTX 470 butting up against the second slot, don't count on adding more than one more graphics card. That still leaves you with a standard PCI slot and a PX1 slot for internal expansion. External expansion options include 11 USB 2.0 ports, 5 in the front, 6 in the rear, a FireWire port, and 2 eSATA ports. The usual analog, digital ports to support the system's 7.1 audio are also round back. Acer's Aspire Predator, model AG7750U2222 in the configuration we tested, certainly sports an interesting design inside and out, as well as enough gaming oomph to handle today's games, even up to extreme resolutions. But even taking its case into account, the suggested retail price of $1,999 is a bit steep given excellent alternatives like the iBuy Power Land Warrior 2, which offer more game and muscle overall, as well as an SSD for quick game loading and a Blu-ray drive for HD entertainment. That's not to say the Predator isn't a fine performer in its own right, we just hope to see itself or a little less. That could have been accomplished most easily had Acer only included 6GB of RAM. Sure. 12 gigabytes sounds impressive, but it's hard to argue that much is necessary for gaming, or almost any other tasks gamers are likely to tackle with this bright orange beast.